So here I am, Creative Quarantine, day, let's see, nine. Um, just checking in. Um, I realized I didn't do a journal entry this morning. Um, I was working strictly from home. Um, got a late start because I'd promised to spend some time with my kid. Um, here's the piece that I was working on during the live broadcast. Um, I'm pretty fast proud of how fast this thing came together because this is only after like an hour and a half worth of painting. Um, the sketch was obscured, but, um, there's going to be, uh, trees coming up and down here. Um, and I'm going to, I haven't decided if it's going to be a slope with trees in the far background or what. Um, but, uh, I really wanted this to have some depth to it. Um, and so I need a four middle background, but I was really proud of how fast that earth came together for being only an hour's worth of painting on it. Um, I've been working on planets and I think that I'm slowly getting better. Um, here's where the squirrel is at. Um, I moved the ears a bit. Uh, I moved the eyes and I think I just need to get into the nitty gritty of the fur now. Um, nothing big deal. Um, I'm working on this one too. I'm going to be toning down that yellow in the thing. I, I like it, but it is a little bit primary colory. So I was thinking about, uh, taking these yellow streaks and turning them orange. Um, cause I really, really had loved it when it was just the turquoise and the white. Um, I still think if I introduce some more purple and whatnot, that, um, I could get that feeling about it again. But, um, right now I'm in the, that last stage of, noodling around the colors and little adjustments here and there. Um, and then this painting is in the ugly stage. I know Pancho told me, don't call it the ugly stage. It's just stages. There's a lot of these kind of stages with my acrylic work. Um, basically I'm feeling around for the forms and making sure that my sketch was accurate and uh, before I go in and really do the details, I found that if I just go in and do the details um, straight out of the gate and just rely on my sketch, sometimes things need to be moved. Um, it's the downside of learning having uh, s sketched in digital. I did originally learn by sketching in ballpoint pen, and that did wonders for my accuracy. But um, I've gotten a little bit into digital and the result has been like when you can transfer the sketch from the, the iPad to the canvas, you got some really amazing and realistic results, which is perfect for the kinds of illustration work that I do. But when it comes to just being able to slap paint, I falter a bit because uh, I'm used to using tools that take a lot of time and I do have accuracy and there's no reason that wolves have to be perfectly 100% photo accurate or anything like that. Like this wasn't from a photograph. This was sketched from, uh, knowing wolf anatomy and, um, glancing at the general poses that they take. I often sketch to documentaries and whatnot. Um, it's no one stares at wolves the way that I and other people that, that really enjoy like wolf behavior, etc. do. And I, I just need to accept that. And I am really excited about where, where this one's going to go. The one on the bottom. I am also loving the texture on this one. I'm going to have to try this texture technique more. Um, I did find with the aluminum panels, I think I like it most when I add the texture on it, painting, uh, the one that I'm painting now is just straight acrylic on. Um, I'd actually come up with the sketch really, really fast. I doodled a fox on it and then there was, there happened to be a CD nearby. So I traced the CD to make the earth because I was like, huh, that's the right size. Um, and that's how it goes sometimes. So there's where I'm at for the night. Have a good one. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to hopefully try my first resin pour and I'm hoping that this piece is finished enough that it can join the possum screaming piece that I'm working on. All right. Have a good one. Hey there. 
So I'm a little bit annoyed that the uh, time lapse that I tried making of this piece got, um, let's see, um, stopped. There we I recentered. There we go. So I tried to take a time lapse of me painting uh, this piece, which I had started yet last night on the broadcast. Um, I'd actually really quickly sketched this piece, and I wanted the rock uh, to experiment. I got this cool um, micaceous iron oxide that I had bought while it was on clearance uh, when they were closing out. It was AC Moore, um, and uh, I thought that this would be a great place to experiment with it. I put the purple underneath because I thought that it would go over it nicely. Um, so now I'm going to add it to the cliff and we'll see how this works. Um, it says to stir gently, not to shake it too hard. So I'm just spinning it in a circle. I guess it introduces foam if you really get crazy. Um, I just need to make a couple more alterations on the fox, but I'm pretty happy with this and uh, something to remove the streakiness in the background. But I thought I would add this and see how this looks over this purple. Although I was surprised, I assumed that it would be transparent, but it is not. Um, it is rather opaque, but that's fine. So I was gonna bring it all the way up to the lighting. I don't mind introducing a little bit of fun stuff. This is experimental work after all. Honestly, it's kind of pretty. I may have to redo the shadows though. I wonder if I can mix this into paints or whatever. I just don't want the effect to look like glitter. That would not be intended. Nor do I want it to look like metallic paint. But it didn't on the bottle. It just looked kind of gritty. And I thought that would be the perfect kind of thing for doing some rock formation that looks kind of cool. Does look like I'm gonna have to go back and re-add the shadows. This stuff is pretty thick, honestly. Oh, that might have been too much water. I should have been more careful. But, you know, you do this by learning. I kind of want to see if I can blend it in a way that's semi-transparent just so we don't have to completely rethink where. And I wanna be able to blend it. Like you don't wanna just like add glitter to one area, you know? It looks like wherever you put it down, it dries pretty quickly. I find that interesting. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this piece. Um, it came together fast, that's for sure. I was thinking to try to resin coat it, but I'm not sure. Um, I love how the trees came out. They were kind of an afterthought and they worked out great. I, they were in my original sketch and then I kind of eliminated them. So it's hard to see, I think, in the film, but this adds kind of a shimmer. And it grays out that purple, which is good because that purple was a little out of control. Um, this piece is more about the red against that green with the blue as a nice accent. And I like this purple, so like I'm glad it's in here, but I wanna be careful not to go over the pots because then you get that weird well, it does look like it'll dry a little bit transparent. Transparent enough, I think I can get away with not really going further in that shadow. Maybe I'll add a touch of Payne's Gray. Let's see if this will mix. It's acrylic, so it should mix just fine. If it doesn't, it's not oils, so. So hopefully that'll just darken. You can just add the shadow back in nice and soft. It was looking kind of pretty. But yeah, so the time lapse didn't show, but I was adding all the, it took a lot of layers to do the fox. Um, 
I wish I had gotten that on. I'll have to do another piece where I go from those ram colors in the background. Um, the shading is achieved with a lot of glazes. So first I add in the reds and oranges, um, and then I add in more blues on top, and then I kind of reach a balance going back and forth until I'm happy with it. The one thing I'm not happy with is how much this tail blends in with the background. I kind of don't want that. I don't mind that the bottom does. But I want it to look like the tail is raised, you know? But I'm glad that that toned down the purple because that makes the red pop even more. And that way this piece is about blue against orange with some greens. And even then that green is pretty muted. So yeah, there you have it. You know what? While I have this paint gray, <laughs> there's some streakiness in the background that I don't love. Of course, I've just put my thumbs straight into the mica spot oxide. As you do. I suppose I should make sure my brush is thoroughly cleaned because I don't want to introduce this mica into the sky. So, wipe my brush. Yeah, but I had kind of was a little streaky when I first applied the color, and I don't mind if I go over these stars because. Um, the cool thing about Paints Gray, it's kind of a transparent -y staining color. And if I go over the stars and then I add them back in, it'll look like they have, especially if I offset it, it'll look like it has kind of a glow. And I'll often do that with the stars. But yeah, the Earth's glow is a little bit stronger on some sides than the others, and it did need to be toned down a bit. So going in. I'm not used to using brushes that are not. Got to be careful not to dry brush with these nice brushes. But overall, pretty happy with that. We're getting, we're getting there. Um, it's nice to finish something so fast because every finished piece, I think, is a bit of confidence. Sometimes you just need to finish something to feel like you can make art. <laughs> it's funny because this piece wasn't even conceived until last night and it's ended up being what my day was spent on. That is how it works. The other pieces can wait. So right now I'm basically just eliminating some of the, you know, I'm going to turn on another light, I think. I'm used to the sunlight being a pretty strong presence, but um, this is the first time I've been working here after dark. It's a Sunday, so I can have a little extra time, not dependent on the that's kind of nice. But the result is that I'm not used to the lighting. Um, I have special, um, this is, I got Southwest facing lighting in this studio. So I have on the windows some frosted glass mimicking. Uh, it's like a static cling. And I love it because um, otherwise the lighting in this room is so harsh. And by hanging those up, it's it really softens the light during the day. But I've never been in here at a time when the light is low enough that uh, that I actually needed. Um, I thankfully have a couple of sunlight bulbs in here, and uh, but I haven't needed to use them not once since I've come in. Um, I will have to move them around though if I intend to work in here again after dark. Thankfully I'm not doing anything that really requires um, being able to see my colors perfect. 
right now I'm just covering up I'm basically trying to blend in the some of the streaks and I'm, because this is the darkest color in the sky I'm also adding little bits so what I do is like I kind of work from an area out and I pick a spot and I just add a little bit of sharpness and I find that doing that um, your brain kind of fills in the details and I can sometimes get like areas that are a little bit lighter to look like cloud formations and you got to keep it subtle it can't be it has to be like only in a shade range because you don't want to bring too much attention to it and sharpness sharpness can draw attention and it's easier easier to get sharp edges in acrylic than it is to get soft ones um, that is definitely one of the drawbacks of acrylic I rely a lot on soft edges and um, you really have to think it through how you're going to get a soft edge. Uh, it's very... In other mediums, it can be hard to get the hard edges back. It's kind of funny how that works. Basically. I don't want to darken it edges around this box without looking like it. I'm just adding paints gray like an outline. So the paints gray is nice because it also kind of glazes so you can also apply it a little softer. area a little bit more in shadow. Technically it's facing away from the light source, but sometimes I like to leave a little bit more lighting than would really appear in real reality. That's okay. It's a taste thing. downside to clear this is like if there's any light colors peeking through I mean there's only so much you do eventually have to like either plan out where the lightest areas are or um, go over them because you can't just glaze them out then they're streaky but a different color <laughs> what I love about glazing is it produces some very rich tones little blue and very rich blends. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I thought about splattering the stars, but honestly, I thought it being like a cold wintry type night that maybe leaving them just with that spattering is plenty. So yeah, um, I may even call this done. We'll see how I like it after it dries. I'm liking that mica soft side. It really toned down the purple, for sure. I hope that uh, it looks as good in the sunlight. I'm debating about whether or not to turn this into a resin piece. Uh, if I do that, it'll dome the resin on top and it'll be basically ready to hang. Um, we shall see. I did paint the edges. It could be framed. It's eight, eight by uh, eight by ten on aluminum, so nice and sturdy. It definitely needs to be sealed, regardless, though, because the um, I find the aluminum as a as a background. It's very easy to accidentally scrape the paint off. All right, so here we go. Oh, I should sign it. <laughs> I always forget to sign my work. I'm not a thousand percent it's done, but I do know it's done enough that if I put my signature on it, it'll be fine. Um, questions, when will I sign it in? 
let's see yeah and I'm using my my name as my signature uh, my maiden name actually is uh, uh, I kept my maiden name uh, Vigent um, if I had taken my husband's name uh, I would be Michelle and Dalton and that would make me mad when signing things so I'm kind of grateful that I kept my name because it means that I am MAV which is a lot less uh, joke inducing let's see you know I think I'm gonna I'm gonna sign it in the tree area and I'm gonna sign it with the yellow ochre that's all already dried I'm gonna sign it with some yellow ochre and I'm gonna do that because it'll look like it's part of the tree let's see I'm gonna pick a good spot for it I have a way of writing my initials that where I tilt it. I practice different ways. And I kind of like my letters are all spiky. So I connect them. Let's see. It is the year 21. to stand up too much. All right. I like that. Sweet. So there you have it. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That was fun. So a nice, fun little piece. And that is how I spent my Sunday. <laughs>